It's Ken back at you again. Today I'm bringing you a very highly requested lesson and that is Cathedral by Van Halen. I did a cover of this about two years ago and I said at the end of the video that I would do a lesson on it if we achieved a thousand likes on this video and lo and behold we soared past that number and it dawned on me a lot of people were starting to message me basically saying we've hit the like target where's the lesson come on bring it and it occurred to me how the hell am I going to do this? Um, obviously, there isn't like one way to play it. Um, it's obviously done in so many different ways by Eddie Live. And of course, there is the studio version, but I think we all know what sounds better. I think a live version is far more influential on so many other people. And in my case, I first heard the 1995 version in Toronto. And I've, I've heard loads of versions since, but still happens to be my favorite version of it. So I'm using that as the frame, I used it as the framework of my cover that I did a long time ago, but also um, it will be the framework of this lesson because it's not played super quick like many other versions of Cathedral, but also it's kind of clear and logically laid out more so than a lot of others. But even then, that shouldn't stop you from playing what might be your favorite version of it. It could be live without a net, for example. So take the technical guidance from this and apply it to any version of Cathedral that you choose. Another couple of tips and recommendations, of course I'm going to give you delay settings as well and some of the technical know-how of how I recorded my version of it. Um, make sure you use a guitar with Burns or Bourne's low friction pots, however you pronounce it, because on any other guitar I've ever tried to learn Cathedral on, because it took me a long time to learn it, I've gone through two volume pots doing it. And even on the guitar I used for my cover, which was a Charvel Superstock SoCal, I broke the volume pot during that video. You wouldn't know, but I actually completely broke it. At the end, it wouldn't go up and it was just doing 360s right the way around. So make sure you get one like this. These with the Bourne's Low Friction Parts, this is in an EVH Stripe series. They're all available across the EVH range. They're virtually invincible. Definitely play it on a guitar with those. Highly recommended. So in terms of my delay settings and the way I ran it, I tried to imitate uh, Eddie's live rig from a long time ago. I want to say a long time ago, we're talking like mid-90s for me. Uh, in this case, um, it is, I'm running my sort of virginal guitar signal through the left-hand side, uh, which is, of course, my drive and sort of various sort of detuned chorus effects coming from my THR amps. And then coming out of the other side is a plug-in in Cubase, which is coming out of the right. And that is just completely wet. So it's just a delay on its own. So you get that really cool sort of spacious effect. From there on, that's all the technical detail. It was really simple. I don't use rack mount units or anything like that. It was just a THR and a plug-in to make that sound. But furthermore, let's get into how it's played. <laughs> ... 
So you've got the chords at the start here. I'm tuned down half a step. If you're in standard, just play the same notes in the same place. Uh, you've got uh, the middle pickup position on, or should do in this case. Depending on which version you want to learn, you can just pluck the chords and then bring your volume up. Eddie does that in some versions, but in the case of the 95 version of inspiring this lesson off, I'm just strumming through them as you would normally, just with the volume backed off. Um, I've got uh, third fret on the low E and A, so I'm using my third finger for the uh, E string, little finger for the A string, and middle finger for the D string, and we're going to play through all six. Okay, really give emphasis to the top end here. Next chord, we're going to move these fingers up a string. We're not going to include the low E this time. We're going to introduce instead the first fret of the B string. So you've got an F major chord here. With the high E included, open. Add a little bit of whammy bar too if you're keen. Then, what we're going to do is go back to the first chord. Move up to a C power chord. But what we're including is open B and high E. Then go down to B. So what you should have this is this in effect. Then of course all this chaos ensues with bringing the bar down, squeals, and all of that stuff. And a lot of people wonder when he brings the guitar, when, when he brings the guitar up like this, he starts doing stuff back here. That's because he's got the back cavity off, and he's just rubbing his fingers along the spring, scraping his nails across, and you get that really cool effect. For those of you who didn't know, now onto the volume swell bits. The thing I'd recommend doing first before you dive right into the piece is learning to play in time with the delay. So once you've got that dialed in, is I'd practice with the volume, playing the very last bit, that sort of... So you can play in time with the delay and then proceed on to the chords and all of the other ideas that go with it. So for the volume swells, I'm going to be teaching that with the delay off so that you can see what's going on and then once you've got it, add delay. But just so you can hear um, what the delay sounds like just on its own. Maybe three or four repeats in there. But of course, add the delay settings or find an equivalent plugin and duplicate those settings. Around 375 milliseconds is your main sort of time interval. Now you may not believe me, but once you can play one part of Cathedral, you can more or less play the whole lot. And just to de demonstrate how this works, it's a true example of how Eddie Van Halen worked in patterns. Okay, and what happens here is when you're volume swelling, you're hammering on one note at a time. In this case, and we're outlining major chords, no joke. That whole idea. And the way it works is you're hammering on, in this case, with your index finger first, you're hammering on quite gently actually, just enough to achieve the note. Second fret of the A, in this case, third finger on a D string, four. Five, uh, four on the G, four on the B, then back through the chord. So if you can get comfortable with this, oh sorry, would recommend as well keeping this index finger down, because it mutes everything underneath it. Then what you're going to do is when you're moving up, you're going to go two, four, six, and then play the same chord. Then, eight, ten, play the same chord, twelve, fourteen, same chord again. So what you should have It's very recognizably cathedral before you even get the delay on there. I would recommend doing that because it's, it's a tricky thing raising the volume of one note at a time and not letting go. So once you've gotten a hold of it, you've got to commit. And the way it goes when it comes back down is you've got... It's 
the exact reverse of what we had in effect. You've got 14, 12, 10. Back through the chord again. Then it goes to D major. Same chord pattern. F, F. C. E flat. Sounds like D major to many ears, but you know what I mean. Then we're back up to G major. And he does this really cool part, and this is repeated on various occasions throughout the piece. You've got... So what I'm doing there is I'm just going B string 12, G string, D string 12. So bringing up the volume each time. And then on the fourth time around, you'd go up a fret on the B string. So in this case, 13, 12, on, then back through the chord again. And he also does the same thing when he gets right up here. It's exactly the same thing, you're just literally taking that chord but moving it up to E flat in the upper register up here. Okay, so from here on, it's virtually a repeat of what we had before. You're starting, you're going back to uh, B, but before we get to this precisely, you got. Oh, sorry, like a descending run almost. So 10 and 12 on the A. 8, 10. 6, 8. 4, 6. Two times tables, basically. And 2, 4. So. Okay, and it's a really cool thing to try out and experiment with. It's a very quick way of always coming up with your own uh, ascending and descending runs with this. And once we get to two here, you repeat what we had before. It's the same progression in the version that I've taken as inspiration. Then once we get up to the top here. Goes to A major this time. Up to B major. C major. D major. Play it as many times as you need for the version that you want to learn. Then up to E flat. And what's going on at the end here is I'm basically going 22 on the B, then 21 uh, down the B, G, and D strings. Okay. So as you can see, I think you must have gathered by now that it's basically major chords in different places across the neck. So all you need to listen to is the root of the chord and then just follow the pattern through. Uh, when he comes back down, this is probably the most complicated part of the whole thing. He does a uh, an ascending run, uh, sorry, excuse me, descending run. Okay. And the way this works is I'm going down, uh, oh, this is on the A string here, 19, 21, uh, 17, 19, 15, 17, 14, 15, 12 and 14, 10 and 12, 9 and 10, 7 and 9, 5 and 7, 3 and 5, Two and three, and then it gets into this really cool pattern here where you've got a. Uh... You've got two on the low, sorry, three on the low E, two, and then when you let go, it should automatically be sort of leaving a little bit of a, a ring out of the low E there. That's normal, so and, and meant to be there. Because it gives that sort of low, sort of distant E minor sound. Anyway, uh, it goes into this really cool pattern here, just to demonstrate it slowly. You wouldn't think 
that's it. But it, but when you add the delay, it all comes together. You've got five seven five. Then up to the G string. G uh, G string seven. D seven. Then you've got uh, D five. A nine. A7, 5, and back into that pattern again. It's like you're pedaling on this almost. Then down to... See how it comes back? Okay, and you do that uh, a couple of times, and then he does another ascending run where he goes up, and he goes... So virtually full, where you've got uh, seven, five, sorry, five, seven, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen, D, uh, in this case, D string, E flat, and you bring the volume up to virtually full, and carry that on. But you stop on A12 and D12. And from there on, the piece is virtually self explanatory until it ends. You've got that. You're done. Virtually. Uh, from there on, that's virtually everything covered. The main thing to absorb with this is the pattern. Dead simple. Once you've got the pattern down, you can play virtually the whole thing. And just as a method of practicing this, so you don't completely destroy your volume part if you don't have one with the bones low friction part, is turn little bits into exercises. Get one little part clean first, and then translate that across the fretboard as opposed to repeating the whole thing and hoping you do a little better each time. Make sure you can... Get that comfortable, and then move it around. Thanks very much for watching this lesson, you guys. I hope you've liked what you've seen. I appreciate it's been a bit of a long one because I wanted to cover as many sort of grounds as I could and make it as helpful for people as possible. Nevertheless, if you have any more questions or any other ideas for lessons, please let me know. I also teach Skype lessons as well. Please let me know. Drop a comment below. I look forward to speaking to you very soon. Take care. Okay, I'm signing off. <laughs>